And that brings me to the next section where we're going to talk about the different contexts. So we can see over here in the tree view that we've got, you know, our object context we briefly talked about. That's where you create your objects. The SOPS context inside of here, this is where surface operations occur. This is the um, geo, geo context or geometry context. Um, and and uh, so, so Houdini's got several different contexts based on what types of things you're trying to do. Some of the other ones you can see over here are the mat context, which we briefly touched on before. This is where materials are created. Um, then there is the output context, which is where our render settings are. Because everything's a node, Redshift, Redshift's render settings exist right here on this Redshift ROP. This Redshift IPR is created by default to go along with this ROP. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but we just kind of ignore that. Everything that we are really concerned with with our render settings is here on this Redshift ROP. So between the mat object and output context, these three contexts right here, that's where um, everything that we're really concerned with in this course is going to be taking place. There's a couple other contexts, just to touch on them real quick. There's the image context, which is a, um, it, we could do basically, there's a little node-based compositor inside of Houdini that you can use, um, and that's sort of what that context is dedicated for. And the uh, chops context, channel context, is where we can uh, do special stuff with like constraints and manipulating channel data or animation data. Um, shops context is sort of a deprecated well, an old version of what the material context is. It's for working with shader operations, but it's really only there to support legacy setups at this point. Um, the stage context is where you work with Solaris and USD and the uh, Karma renderer, which we're not going to be covering in this course. Um, but it is good to uh, just have that in the back of your head. And then the task context is where we can do things with PDG or the procedural dependency graph, which is more or less just automating variations on geometry and stuff like that. Things that we won't be covering in this course either. Our main dish is the mat object and output context where we're going to be, um, you know, kind of manipulating our data, apply, applying materials to our objects and outputting our objects in rendering them out of Houdini. So it's important to kind of have a way to get between these contexts easily. Now you could navigate back and forth between them using uh, this, um, tree view over here on the left. Uh, we could collapse this down and actually create a tree view right here as well. And, um, you know, when one of these, uh, when like the big network gets expanded, you can see there's a ton of stuff in here. Just going to collapse that down. But you can kind of get back and forth between your uh, different contexts over here if that's what you want to do. Other ways of doing it, um, obviously there's this thing right here, which kind of serves as a file path. You can go and jump between the mat context and the object context and the output context here this way. Um, I'm going to close the tree view right now. Uh, another way you can do it is using the radial menu. So if you hold down the N key while your um, mouse is over the network view, you can um, navigate to the object context. Uh, by going to that, um, the mat context by going to the materials section. And you just uh, hold down the end key and drag your mouse over to the wrap section or the output context. And that gets you back to your render settings. So that's another way to do it. And a way that is my favorite way to do it is to actually, um, you know, set quick marks. So let's go back to the object context. And right here, what I'm going to do is set a quick mark by pressing control one. And this is just a way of telling Houdini that I want to remember where I'm at in this net, in the network view. Um, and so you just kind of bookmark it by hitting control one. You have control one through five that you can use to do this. So let's just assign uh, the other two contexts that we're, we're concerned with to those different views. So let's go and navigate from this drop down menu to the mat context. And I'll hit control two here. And then I'll go to the output context and hit control three here. And now you can see that when I press the buttons one, two, and three, I'm just hopping between those three contexts. So that's also a handy way of navigating through contexts.